Welcome to The Music Reel. I'm your host, Nicola Burton. Today I'm speaking with Paul St. Helene, who is the CEO for Music Australia, and he's also the editor and the co-author, the primary co-author, for the recently released book, Musicians and Addiction, which I've got here. I'll just hold it up there. Paul, thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank How are you, you going? Well, I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for inviting me onto your um, program. Well, look, this book, thank you for sending it to me. I loved it, and I think it's... Um, it's got a great application in our industry moving forward. So perhaps let's start with you. How did this book come about? And perhaps what would be some of the takeaways you could introduce us to just for someone who hasn't read it yet? Sure, yeah. Look, I, I suppose around about the time I commenced at Music Australia, I was looking at a lot of research and a lot of academic papers into uh, musicians and addiction and some of the stats were extraordinary you know and I was meeting up with people like Clive at Support Act and uh, we were looking at all the, you know the stats around anxiety and depression and all these sorts of things so I think that was a troubling um, thing and I also I suppose I um, had my own little battle with dependency issues about 20 years ago and so for 20 years I've sort of had that private world where I've sort of been across a lot of the addiction stuff but I've never ever brought it into my like public career <clears throat> and so this was the first time I thought look, I've been in the music business for 30 years you know but I've also had this sort of secret world of that sort of addiction dependency stuff where I was you know across a lot of the treatments and a lot of guys I know and people I know in, in recovery so I thought maybe as a I could actually put this together and, and sort of like pull together a project around it uh, but I didn't realize I guess at the time just heading into 2020 how timely this would be in terms of musician welfare and the welfare of people in the music industry because I think we're turning our attention onto the health of people in the industry very square squarely and there's lots of different angles on that and dimensions of that and I suppose addiction and substance abuse to me is one of those dimensions. Absolutely there's so much we could say about this I think my favorite section was about um, when you're talking about Rob Cannon and he's talking about the elite athlete perspective and, you know, for the musicians to find their peak performance uh, profile. I think that that's a great place to start. To, to, it's like a positive place, isn't it? So do you think that perhaps this book is highlighting an opportunity for us as industry to perhaps create a new standard across the board and perhaps implement training for us to be able to learn, I guess, someone like Rob's method or anybody else in the industry. I guess it's from you, it's like, what's your vision for us to be able to apply this book? Look, I do think it's not just going around in circles year after year after year, just going through the same stuff. I think there is there, there are solutions to this, you know, and I think there's lots of treatment options that are available for people. There's lots of support that's out there. There's lots of myths that we need to attack. But I do think that the, the Rob Cannon piece is really interesting because he's looking at, and it's also a bit of a theme in the book, so there's lots of guys talking about, like, meditation and medit meditation practices and things that they found very helpful. And I think that... This is a really important angle. And if you're going to take um, drugs and alcohol, you know, like, well, I suppose, mitigate that in your life, you've got to have replacements. You've got to have other stuff that you put in its place, you know. And I think if we look at, say, performance anxiety, which is a big driver in, in music, you have to sort of think, what are your techniques? You know, what, what are you going to replace? Like, if you're basically using drugs and alcohol to self-medicate performance anxiety, what are you going to do in its place if you don't want to do that, you know? And so it really makes you think about this sort of thing. And Rob is very much about this using the sort of athlete elite athlete model of how do they deal with this which i think is a really interesting thing because like say if you're i don't know if you're an olympic athlete and you've got a hundred meters olympics final the next day i mean imagine how bad your sleep's going to be imagine the performance anxiety around that you know i've got a billion people watching me um, and it's sort of, I might lose by 0.001 of a second. You know, I mean, you know, that is a very, very sort of fraught and tense sort of experience. Now, musicians and you know, musicians have that, you know, at the, at the peak level, have that sort of, you know, weight upon them. But you can't imagine the athlete having three slugs of whiskey, you know, before it, that would ruin their, <laughs> their chance of actually, you know, competing. So that there are other techniques and other things that, you know, they apply in, in sports. And I think it, it's really interesting to have a look at that. And um, there's a cellist in our, in our book which talks about, like, even, like, a third-rate athlete in Germany has their sort of psychologist and their, you know, their whole team, their support team around it. And so you're thinking, well, look, you know, musicians need a support team, 
you know, if they're, if they're going to be really have big ambitions and, and tackle this industry, because it a, it's a brilliant and beautiful industry, but it's also a very tough industry. And I think at the very least, your industry wish list has to have mentoring and coaching as part of like the mandatory standard moving forward. So look, Paul, I think that this is a great book and I would really encourage everyone to go and go to Music Australia website. I'll put the link in this post. Get yourself well, actually, a that, yeah, that it's not actually that the main retail platform is a, is a specialist um, setup where it's basically mm-hmm. a totally dedicated thing called musicianaddiction.org, which is not the Music Australia okay. website. Okay. Um, but it does lead, you can see click throughs. If you go to the Music Australia website, you can click through. You can click through, yes. Yeah. So I would advise everyone to buy this book. Paul, thank you for taking the time to speak to me. I, I'm so grateful that you sent this to me. It's, it has changed my perspective from, from the perspective of someone who's had an agency for 30 years. So. I thank you for that and thank you for taking the time to add your voice to this conversation. No, thank thank you very much and thanks for supporting the project. Music Australia is proud to host an annual Music Industry Roundtable, which regrettably has been cancelled in 2020 because of the coronavirus pandemic. Because of the pandemic, we've decided in its place to do a video check-in with a number of organisations who have the welfare of people who work in the music industry at the core of their mission. We've asked them to look at what's been achieved by these organisations over the last few months, but also what remains to be done and what support is needed to do that. While this is filmed in July 2020, we see that a lot of this will still be relevant well into 2021. So let's take a look at the first of these organisations. My name's Clive Miller and I'm the CEO of Support Act. Support Act has been uh, providing support to artists, crew and music workers who have been impacted by COVID-19 in two key ways. The first has been the provision of financial support through our crisis relief grants. There has also been a lot of fundraising that we have undertaken and that other people have undertaken on our behalf. There has been incredible support from uh, the music industry and from music lovers. The other uh, key service that we provide is in the area of mental health and well-being. And uh, again, with support from the Australian Government, uh, we've been able to expand the reach of the Support Act Wellbeing Helpline. We've been really delighted to do that. And then to support that, uh, we are providing uh, some other education and training uh, programs and opportunities. Uh, We've been supporting Crew Care and some of their members to undertake mental health first aid training. We are working with the Association of Artist Managers on a program that will provide access to a range of mental health and wellbeing education and training programs. Support Act has also been running a weekly program on Facebook, talking to people in the industry about mental health issues. And we've recently launched a new webinar series called On My Mind. There's always more that uh, can be done. I think we've seen uh, a lot that has been done already. I think uh, Job Seeker and Job Keeper have proved to be uh, enormously impactful in providing a safety net for all artists and crew and music workers. I think from Support Act's point of view, we just want to make sure that we're there for the long haul, providing uh, access to crisis relief uh, for people who need it and providing uh, support for people in the area of uh, their mental health and wellbeing as well. If people want to support Support Act, obviously uh, we, we, we welcome uh, their ongoing financial support and that of course will be uh, really important. I guess on the flip side of that, uh, we really want to make sure that uh, anybody who actually is struggling financially and needs our support does reach out to us. If you or anyone else you know uh, needs help, uh, please uh, go to our website, uh, get onto the Get Help page and put in your application. And if you need to talk to anyone about any aspect of your mental health uh, or well-being, 
uh, then please call the Wellbeing Helpline. The number is 1800 959 500. My name is Hayden Johnston. I sit on the board for Crew Care Australia, representing the New South Wales region. Crew Care is a volunteer advocacy group for crew who work in the Australian live music industry. We don't only just represent production crew, we represent anybody who works on the show. Caterers, site crew, various different departments that are all there. Uh, working and over the period of time recently we have been focusing our efforts on supporting, originally supporting crew through the induction into job keeper or job seeker um, and also recently our focus has turned back to our concentration on mental health within the crew. Crew Care work very closely with Support Act. We have a specific Roadies Fund within Support Act that we fundraise for. We offer a crisis relief, same as Support do, and, and we try and communicate to them and, and see them through the process of making sure they're looked after. We also are currently offering crew the opportunity to do a mental health first aid training course, and that's our main focus at the current time. At the moment, there are crew of the casual basis who have missed out on Job Keeper. Um, who may be currently sitting on Job Seeker. Job Seeker doesn't really identify with the occupations that are within the live music space. There is a, a certain gap there of acknowledging in that world that that is where the person works, what they are trained in, what their motivation is in. The government are possibly getting to the point of acknowledging that, which is hopeful. There is an arts fund that has come in the disbursement of that to production companies and to the ground level of a live music event, so excluding the artist and the management, record labels, etc., like that, the people who go to create it need to have support. Possibly the best way for people to support crew care, if you're within the industry, would be to join, to try and get everybody in the working environment on a live show into a central space would be a fantastic thing because it's been up until now a very fractured organisation. Most of our funding, if people support Support Act, then they are supporting the industry uh, as a whole and we uh, basically drive everybody to the benefits that Support Act have. If you are seeking more information on Crew Care, you can check out the website, um, Crew Care Australia, and find out what we're all about. You can check out our socials, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, etc. Um, but please log on, and if you find it anything that can remotely support you, we try very hard. We're a volunteer group made up of people who have worked in the industry for a long, long time. But the more people we have involved, the better it is for us. Hello, I'm Julia Edwards, General Manager of Entertainment Assist. It's our organisational mission to support the mental health and wellbeing of the Australian entertainment industry. When the threat of COVID-19 emerged on our community, Entertainment Assist knew that our people could have their mental health adversely impacted with the uncertainty ahead. With production cuts, cancellations and industry being ceased in all sectors, it was our core focus to support the mental health and wellbeing of our people with free and accessible services. There would be some key areas where we could help to keep people focused on their wellbeing and a short series of videos have been made readily available to assist in wellbeing topics such as the importance of sleep, forming healthy habits, staying connected and where to seek authentic financial advice. Each video has additional credible resources that ensure our web visitors can easily navigate pathways for additional information and support they may need. You can find these easily by visiting our website entertainmentassist.org.au 
Entertainment Assist worked with our allied partners during this time by joining sector-specific discussions across Australian metro and regional cities using online discussion platforms and podcasts. We shared our allied partners' messaging for support and sector relief where necessary, and we continued to educate our media networks with our research report, Working in the Australian Entertainment Industry. This report is a benchmark for all of industry to drive home the troubling statistics where suicide in our industry is double that of the general population. Moderate to severe anxiety is 10 times higher, depression five times higher, suicide ideation for our tech and crew roles is nine times higher, and sadly five of our industry people try and take their own lives each week. Entertainment Assist will continue to invest in research and to work with industry to get mental health and wellbeing on the workplace agenda. We will appeal to supporting partners and government to recognise the need for access to free mental health services and prevention-based curriculums to better prepare our students when they do transition into industry. Right now, we're ready to launch our intermission program online. Intermission is both engaging and informative and provides a solution lens to mental health and wellness, together with industry insights. Check it out on our website or contact us for a program overview to see where we can help your team. Stay tuned for more research findings from Entertainment Assist this year, and remember to follow our work through Facebook and join our online community. Donations help us to continue our work with the aim for improved mental health for our industry and to create long-lasting generational change and for our people to be well. Thanks for listening and your ongoing support of our work. And please share this message with people you care about that right now may need some support. I'm Paul Davies, I'm the Director of Musicians at the Media, Entertainment and Arts Alliance, which includes Musicians Australia. Well, we're a union for musicians and crew and other technical people, uh, staff generally in creative industries and um, of course with musicians we've been organising to uh, ensure that there's an improvement to the income assistance that uh, musicians need. and probably as much, if not more, than many other sectors of the economy. So our main activity is to ensure that all creative workers, all workers in the creative industries, are given access to appropriate income support, JobKeeper mainly. And we've been very active in lobbying governments and working with one another to improve the supports that they are receiving by putting rational and clear arguments to government about what should be done to support the industry. Recognising that there is the workforce in this sector is um, diverse, forms of employment and engagement are very diverse. People work from gig to gig, uh, you know, the original gig economy some say. Um, and that doesn't uh, fit neatly it seems with some government policies about income support and meaning that many of those in our sector who require the income support have missed out. So that's, that's really the, um, the principal problem. So the recent announcements have been helpful in that they've recognised, generally speaking, the value of the industry, but there needs to be more uh, sensitivity and more tailored efforts to assist the workers who make this industry function. Musicians Australia represents all gigging musicians and of course um, we have a basic claim that, uh, that musicians need to be paid a minimum fee for their performances. With government money being injected into the sector as uh, recently announced to assist events, festivals, other uh, events that musicians will perform at, we're saying that that government money should th flow through to musicians with a guaranteed minimum payment. We're calling on anyone who's benefiting from the government uh, investment in uh, this sector through recent crisis uh, funding to ensure that those funds get through to the performers by way of minimum fees for gigs and of course also through to the technical staff and the crew who run those events. That money is intended to uh, drive 
the industry back into recovery and of course the most vital part of that industry are the workers, the performers, the crew and technical staff. Hi everyone, my name is Tracy Margeson and I'm the Head of Program at the Arts Wellbeing Collective. We want to extend our congratulations to the team at Music Australia on the release of their new book, Musicians and Addiction, Research and Recovery Stories. In 2016, research highlighted startling statistics regarding the mental health and well-being of those that work in the live performance industry. In response, Arts Centre Melbourne launched the Arts Wellbeing Collective, a community of practice consisting of hundreds of arts and cultural organisations who work together to promote positive mental health and well-being in the performing arts industry. Since the pilot program in 2017, the Arts Wellbeing Collective has grown rapidly to be a comprehensive sector-wide initiative, the only one of its kind anywhere in the world. We see a future where the performing arts industry is renowned for its world-leading approaches to psychological safety, where all performing arts workers are enabled to do their best work, where performing arts organisations, companies and workplaces are consciously designed for psychosocial safety, and where sector leaders, peak bodies and organisations work together to support the mental health and well-being of their people and to positively contribute to broader understandings of mental health. In order to achieve this rather ambitious positive reform agenda, we deliver a range of programs and services that are completely free of charge and available to anyone who works in the live performance industry. In order to increase mental health literacy and promote positive actions, we provide individuals with access to tailored resources such as tour well, podcasts, videos and other guides, training in things like mental health first aid and creative self-care, and supports such as our partnership with the Support Act Wellbeing Helpline. We also work to create mentally healthy workplaces, providing bespoke expertise, resources and training for performing arts organisations. And we work to embed systems level change, addressing systemic and cultural ways of working that may have a negative impact on people's mental health and wellbeing. We hope the Arts Wellbeing Collective contributes to a dramatic narrative shift in the live performance industry, where we are renowned for working in ways that enable everyone to thrive. For more information or to become a member, visit artswellbeingcollective.com.au. We would like to conclude with a project that Music Australia has put together on musicians and addiction. This project is unprecedented in terms of the comprehensive, multifaceted way that we've come at the topic. The first section of this book looks at 230 published research studies and articles on the topic presenting evidence of the extraordinary vulnerability musicians have towards addiction. Contributory factors are explored such as performance anxiety, the use of drugs with creative intent, the cultural and workplace pressures of the industry and the industry attracting people who use music as medicine to work through their demons. Section 2 presents 12 excerpts from interviews and autobiographies of well-known musicians, 12 specially commissioned personal recovery stories from musicians working across multiple genres and a series of professional perspectives. The final section of the book summarises implications and practical advice for individual musicians, organisations and the industry as a whole. It includes a wish list for supporting change at an industry level. The Australian, UK and US music industries are equally represented in the book. 62% of rock music autobiographies contain an addiction story and the history of jazz has been profoundly impacted by addiction. We're seeing a big spike in anxiety and depression in the industry and a correlation between that and substance abuse issues. The devastating impact of the coronavirus pandemic, recent tragedies with pharmaceutical drugs and hip-hop, the ubiquitous problem of musicians self-medicating performance anxiety with drugs and alcohol, and recent studies in the UK and Australian music industries all show that this issue remains a contemporary problem. Thanks for giving this video your time. Um, so stay safe and well. We know from the addiction area that only one in eight people who self-diagnose with a dependency issue ever seek help for that problem. So be conscious of the support that's available to you and reach out if you need support. Thank you.